All right, class, we're going to learn our first learning objective. And this learning objective is all about asking a scientific question and coming up with an experiment in order to test that scientific question. So we always start with a phenomenon, just something that you want to learn more about, something that you want to explore. So maybe you're thinking about a, a, a bolt of lightning and you want to ask some questions and learn more about that. Uh, maybe it's a grandfather clock and you see the pendulum moving back and forth and you want to ask some questions and do an experiment with the physics of that motion. Well, in this video, we're going to pick a different phenomenon. We're going to use a plant growing. And so here was our plant. Um, it's growing. And when you look at this phenomenon, you start to think, what are some questions that I can ask about it? Well, maybe an easy one is what type of plant is it? What type of plant is it? And that's a good question. Why not? Um, why does it need sun? Why does it need sunlight? That's another great question. There's nothing wrong with that. But for our class, we need a good scientific question. And what makes a good scientific question? Well, it needs to be testable. We need to be able to run an experiment that helps us answer that question. So the question needs to be testable and it's gotta be testable using our materials. It also has to be specific. So um, if, if your question, you wanna read that scientific question and you wanna go, oh, I know exactly what the scientist is gonna do. Um, and, that, and, and a specific question will help you get there. And then questions come in all different types, but right now I'm looking for cause and effect type or style questions from you guys. And what does that mean? So let's look at our two questions that we came up with. This first one, what type of plant is it? There's nothing wrong with that. It's just, you could Google the answer. That's not a cause and effect type of question. That's sort of a, um, that's an identification type of question. Why does it need sun? Well, that's a great question. It's complex. You'll need to understand things like chloroplasts and photosynthesis. And you can certainly do some experiments to answer that. But that why is sort of open-ended and doesn't really hit our last category here, which is, which is a cause and effect. It's not, that's not really a cause and effect type of question. So how can you make a, how can we look at a phenomenon like this and then pick a good question or ask a good question? Well, let's take a look at what else is on our table here with us. So we have this lamp here and it's got some light shining out of it. That could be useful. Um, we have this jug of water and it's got little markers on it so we can know exactly how much water we're using. We got some pH strips and if you've ever seen these, if you're testing the chemicals on a pool or a hot tub, these guys, um, they tell you how acidic, they tell you how acidic or how basic um, your liquid is or your, or your soil maybe, you could do a test on that. So let's try again. So another question might be something like, if I give it light, will it grow? And I like that question a little better than the other ones because you clearly have a cause and effect. I'm going to give it light, that's the cause, and will it grow, that's the effect. So the plant growth will be the effect. And that's great, but it's not specific enough. I don't exactly know what the scientist is gonna do. I know a little bit, he's gonna give it light, he's gonna see if it grows. Um, but let's see if we can make it even better. So let's make, let's go G2G, good to great. So how about this question? How does the, how does the amount of light affect the plant height? How tall the plant grows? So you're actually, you're, you're getting much more specific there. And that's a good question. That's perfect. And I think that this, you know, helps us with a great example. So that really helps us um, come up with a question. It's specific. We got, it's testable. We have the, all the materials that we can use. We'll actually need a meter stick. So maybe you can draw a little meter stick or some way to measure the plant height over there. And it's a cause and effect style question. So let's analyze this for some important key ingredients. So when we're asking a scientific question, we want to make sure that it has an independent variable and a dependent variable. Um, those are two new words. I don't know why I wanted to, to jump back here. So two new words, independent variable 
and dependent variable. Those are main parts of any scientific experiment. So we asked the question, now we want to make sure that we have a good experiment. And if you have, if you're setting up an experiment, you need to have identified what's the independent variable and what's the dependent variable. So let's go back. We, let's figure out what those two things mean. Do, do, do. What happened here? Let me stop my share. One second, share and screen, iPad via cable. Ah, I'm back. Perfect. I don't know what that was. So the independent variable. So every scientific experiment needs an independent variable. This word variable, it's just a factor that changes. That word vary, vary means to change. So it's, it's a factor, some part of your experiment that's changing. And this part is going to be the independent part. So what does that mean? So the independent variable is what you change. The independent variable is what you change. And it's the cause. The independent variable is the cause in an experiment. Okay, let's go back to our scientific question and see if we can identify the independent variable. Going up here. How does the amount of light affect the plant growth? Okay, so we've got some variables here. We have some things that are going to change. We're going to change the amount of light and the plant height might change, presumably. So what's the thing that is the cause and what's the thing or the factor that's the effect so this one right here, the amount of light, that's the cause. That's the thing that you are going to change as the scientist. I'm going to change the amount of light this plant gets. And I don't get to choose the plant height. The plant sort of chooses that or the light causes the plant to grow or not. And so you have a cause and effect. And that's how we identify the independent variable. It's the thing that we manipulate. So the independent variable is the thing that's manipulable, meaning you, you are manipulating that. I'm choosing how much light to give that plant. So let's just write, write it down here. In that example, the independent variable was the amount of light. So if you understand this concept, you're going to get um, thrown scientific questions or maybe just a phenomenon, and you have to tell me what the independent variable is, which means you, you got to sort of get you got to get the idea that of these three, like what makes an independent variable? It's what you change. It's the cause of an experiment. It's the thing that you manipulate. Now the dependent variable, this is what you measure. This is what you measure. And it's the effect. It's the effect. It's the variable that's responding to whatever changes you made. So looking back, the plant height, the plant height, that's the responding variable. That's going to be your dependent variable. The amount of light is your independent variable. Often I abbreviate that with IV for independent variable. And your plant height, that's your dependent variable. Cool. So what's left? There's really nothing left except for the last piece of an experiment. The last piece is the constants. So constants, these are the things that do not change the factors that do not change. And in fact, it's, it's, even, it's even more important than that. You, you make an effort to make sure that they don't change. You don't want anything else to change in this experiment except for your independent variable and your dependent variable. So um, you control these to keep them from changing, them from changing. Um, another way to think about constants, you know, the factors that, that do not change, you control these. Um, they're like the independent variables that you didn't choose in your scientific experiment. So for example, um, we decided that our experiment was gonna be about light. How, how the light affects the plant. Now, say you're every each day you give the plant, you know, um, you, you, you give it some light, you give it maybe five hours of light each day. 
um, and then you change it up, you give it 10 hours of light um, each day and you see if that affects the plant growth. Now, then you put it under light for most of the day, 20, 20 hours um, under the lamp and you see how much it grows then. If you're not consistent about the water, if you gave it like 20 milliliters of water, then 40 milliliters of water, then 20 milliliters of water, then you're not keeping the amount of water constant. The amount of water is a constant in that experiment. The pH, keeping the pH, the acidity of the soil and the water that you're giving it, that's got to stay constant. So it's all the other variables, the factors that can change, it's all the other variables that you're now controlling. So the amount of light was our independent variable. The amount of growth, how tall the plant grows, that was our dependent variable. And our constants, I'll just use the word C, our constants are all the other things. Whenever we ask a scientific question, we wanna make sure that we have an independent variable and a dependent variable. And when we plan our experiment, when we start writing the procedure for how we're actually gonna run our tests, we wanna make sure we got one independent variable, one dependent variable, and all other variables are held constant. That's the concept, guys. Good luck.